Hi, I'm James Miller. I'm a licensed psychotherapist and the host of Lifeology. Lifeology Radio has been nationally broadcast and syndicated since 2017. It's in 13 major markets and on 17 terrestrial stations, as well as all digital and streaming platforms, with a listenership of over three and a half million listeners. As we know, Lifeology means the study of life. And that's what makes this show so different, as we focus on all aspects of a person's life, not just a specific niche. I have the pleasure of interviewing so many amazing people just like you, some really well-known and some not so well-known. But that's the goal of Lifeology, is to normalize it, that we're all alike. We all have life lessons to learn and life lessons to teach. When you started drinking and you picked up your first glass of wine and you know you said you were able to moderate it for 20 years, when did you finally realize that you were having a problem or struggle with that? Oh, well, that, there wasn't a one single moment. I mm -hmm. wish there were. Sure. <laughs> and then I wish I you know, said, oh, I'm going to fix this. <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> and I think that's a struggle for a lot of people. They don't, they don't realize the severity yeah. of it or they, it's, it's at a distance. The, the knowledge is at a distance. They recognize it, but it's, but it, it can't be. That. Right. Why would it be? That? Well, I, you know, listen, I, um, A, I didn't think I knew anybody else who was an alcoholic sure. because that was completely false. I knew a lot of people who were, you know, struggling with addiction or in recovery. I just didn't, you know, they don't talk about it, which, yeah. um, so I didn't know who they were, which sadly, you know, it would have helped me maybe yeah, yeah. in some small way to know that there were other people like me out there. Even as you reflect on, on that, that part of your life, do you see the, dis the difference between who you are today versus who you were then? Totally, yeah, I, I do. I, back then I had no faith. I, I, I blamed God for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, depression, depression will make you throw yourself away. I mean, yeah. it, it really, as, as you know, I'm sure that you, you, you know a lot about this, but it's, it's uh, man, it, it, it's tough. When you don't mm -hmm. care about things, you don't care about the outcomes mm -hmm. and you don't really think about them. So yeah. responsibility kind of goes out the window. Yeah. And, you, and, it, and when you know what's gonna happen, you know you're gonna get fired, now what happens? What do you do now? You know, growing up with the Osmond family, I can't imagine how that is. I mean, you, all of the Osmond siblings are so talented. You know, there's so many different people. We can highlight many of the siblings. But how was it for you growing up in a dynasty like that of, of just performers and artists? You know, James, I think the older that I get, the more I look back and appreciate the things that I was able to be part of, you know, to mm -hmm. from a child. I mean, I was literally on television before I was even a year old. Wow. I, I look like Maggie Simpson had a little binky in my mouth, but I was on the Donnie and Marie show, you know, oh, and that's wow. where I. How was it for you? Because there are obviously highs and lows. So you hear you see this figure that I'm sure was astronomical for you at that time. And you're like, oh, my gosh, what, what are we going to do? How did you keep your momentum going and say, we're going to push through this regardless if that number seems too, too great or not? Well, the one thing I kept telling myself, we, we got rejected a ton of times. I, bet, I mean, I, I, I once took a look through all my all my uh, meetings and I really think that we got rejected over 400 times. And oh that's no gosh. baloney, over 400 Alan, times over, th over three years. Yeah. And um, I just kept saying to myself, you know, worse ideas raise more money. So mm -hmm. I can't give up on this idea. And like yeah. I always say, I'm a spoiled brat. So the more people that say no, the more people uh, I say to myself, I'm going to show them. Oh, exactly. and, uh, I like that. and all the rejections fueled me because I knew it was a great idea. Sure. And uh, the more times I just got turned down, you know, sent out of an office, w walking out dejected, holding my little briefcase. Mm -hmm. I was like, I, I got to get this thing going. I I'm, not I'm not giving up. Yeah. Do you ever see some of those people now who said no? And as a matter of fact, I do. James had this guy, Ron Pullman, I don't know what his name is. He does, you know how much we love watching Pinky and the Brain? Yeah. We just watched the mm -hmm. new episode. That guy just had the same kind of cancer you have, Dad. Yeah. Listen to him. He sounds fine. You're going to be okay. Mm. That's why that's important. Yes, and it is. I learned to live, I'm learning to live right now. Even God can't change the past. And the future is dictated by what I do now. Yes, yes. One of the main reasons why this show is so popular is because I'm a licensed psychotherapist with over 25 years of experience. But this is not a counseling show. 
And that's why people really enjoy it is because I teach practical tools and techniques that each person can use to streamline their life. I normalize everything that people go through because there's nothing different under the sun. Each episode will supplement the life lesson I teach to help people really grow and develop. Join me in the millions of people who already listen to Lifeology Radio.